As we gather together on this beautiful evening, let us sing together number 641, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 641. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, as we come together this evening to enter into these sacred mysteries of our redemption in Christ, let us so prepare ourselves to celebrate them worthily and well as we call upon the mercy of our Savior and acknowledge our sins. confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be. Sins 
Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care that it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, Every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. A very warm welcome to all of our visitors who gather with us this evening and to those joining us via the internet. 
As we draw even closer to Ash Wednesday this week, the Mass readings presented by Holy Mother Church continue to help us prepare for a holy and a fruitful Lent. They point out pitfalls to avoid, the vital importance of self-knowledge, and how what is truly in our hearts is revealed. Our Gospel reading warns us about zeroing in with eagle eyes on the sins, faults, and failings of others while being blind to our own. Frequently, it seems that we're more focused on what others are doing than what we are doing. How well Jesus knows human nature. It's the other person who must be wrong or wanting. We give ourselves all the benefit of the doubt. Understanding, patience, and mercy are always available to us. Getting to know our true self requires much self-reflection, self-examination, and a good dose of humility. Jesus tells us that we will know a tree by its fruit. The tree and its fruit we need to be looking at isn't primarily someone else, but our own. A good tree produces good fruit, and an evil tree produces evil fruit. What kind of fruit are we producing? What kind of tree are we? Looking back at last week's gospel reading, we can see the interior dispositions and the actions that produce good spiritual fruit. Doing to others as you would have them do to you, what we call the golden rule. Compassion, patience, forgiveness, Responding rather than reacting in difficult circumstances. Giving to those who ask of you. Generosity, gratitude, self-denial. Loving your enemies. Doing good to those who hate you. Blessing those who curse you. Praying for your enemies. As disciples of Jesus, how do we measure up to our master's teachings? That's something for us all to prayerfully consider and ponder. Our first reading from the book of Sirach shows how our speech, our conversations, and perhaps especially our Facebook, Instagram messages, or tweets Reveal the hidden, secret intentions of our hearts and minds. The writer gives us three proverbs that offer timeless spiritual insights into the truth about human nature and about ourselves. A sieve was used to sift grain or corn. Usually it was kind of a square frame with some kind of a screen stretched across it. When shaken, the grain passed through the screen, and the chaff and the filth that the animals left behind when they trod the grain remained. Like the chaff, our faults can't be filtered out. They become evident in our conversation. The quality of a potter's vessel is revealed when baked in a furnace. If it's improperly made, it'll crack in the intense heat. So times of tribulation are also a test. It's during times of trial and difficulties, that's when our true self, our real identity, tends to emerge and can be seen. And sometimes it's not a very pretty picture. The fruit of a tree discloses how well it has been cultivated. 
Likewise, our conversations reveal how our hearts and minds have been formed. Jesus basically says the same thing, just much more succinctly. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, I think we can all agree that slander is sinful. To tell lies about someone is wrong. Even society recognizes that. We have laws against slander, libel, and perjury. But my friends, what about gossip? Do we realize how destructive and poisonous our negative comments, our social media posts about others can be? You know, we don't have a right to tell everything we know about someone even if it's true. Not unless, of course, we have a grave and a legitimate reason for doing so. This is something I think we have to be really careful about because gossip is something that all of us too easily can fall into almost without even realizing it. We need to stop and think before we speak or press the sin button. If we haven't already done so, now is the time we need to be making our Lenten resolutions. Don't wait until Ash Wednesday. Make a plan today. What vices do we especially want to root out? What virtues do we want to grow in? What extra prayers, devotions, or spiritual readings will we choose? Perhaps we'll even decide to fast at times other than those prescribed by the church. Whatever it is you choose, remember these words of encouragement from St. Paul. Be firm, steadfast, always devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Let us renew our faith in the Lord who has created and redeems us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now in faith and trust call upon our Heavenly Father to hear us and help us. For the Church, that she may always humbly accept just criticism and look for ways to better proclaim the gospel of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish, that we may excel in the works of charity, giving thanks to God for blessings without number. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our nation, that they may deepen a commitment to civil speech and through family practice cultivate the minds of all young people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the fighting in Ukraine, for those who have lost lives, loved ones, and homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are facing death, that they may have the strong support of family and community and be assured of the victory that awaits the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week, that they may be borne by angels to the eternal embrace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, our refuge and our strength, as we, your people, bring these needs and prayers before you, we ask that in your mercy and love you hear and answer them. For as always, we present these prayers in faith and in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord now and forever. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing together number 744, as a fire is meant for burning, number 744. Sweet. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count your oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as a source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children are scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your Holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once we were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the 
sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come forward to receive our Savior, let us sing together number 925, All Who Hunger, number 925.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, O Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you go this evening, just a reminder, as a deacon mentioned in his homily, that Lent, your most favorite season, begins this coming week. So kindly check the bulletin for the Mass times on Ash Wednesday. And also on Ash Wednesday, there will be available for all of you uh, for your spiritual reading and prayer this Lent, a, a free book uh, on behalf of the parish. So have a blessed week, everyone, and I'll definitely see you back here next weekend as well. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we go forth to spread God's word, let us sing number 610, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, number 610.